Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch and joining a lovely day here in the Ozarks. Very clear sky. I don't know if it'll show up very well. There we go. See, look at that. It's an awkward angle, I know, for you watching. But a beautifully clear sky. But I'll tell you something, maybe nothing. Probably is nothing, but you just never know. Um, a lot of military plane activity above it. In fact, there was just one flying over uh, just a few minutes ago. Uh, there's been B-2 bombers, the stealth bombers, um, have been doing some training circling. I believe probably about three uh, based on my own hillbilly understanding because three would go by and then a few minutes later three more would go by. And that went on for a couple hours. I think they're just circling, doing some training. But I've seen a few other military planes. So it could just be normal training but there are a few posts online there was a hypersonic missile test today by the united states and i've seen a few other posts and in, in, in information in the last couple of days that there's been an increased amount of training of course that could also just be people speculating but anyways thought i would throw that out there also if you want to see uh, a video that i did on um it, it's not a bug out vehicle but it could be a bug out vehicle. One of the uh, other team members in our emergency response team that is has joined the fire department, uh, it's their response vehicle that they use to respond to medical calls, uh, that they use to respond to fire calls and stuff. And I've shown my video over my, my vehicle over on locals. And so today I show that vehicle. And it's set up differently for different purposes. And even though not everything in it applies to prepping, a lot of it does. Once you see the video, you might understand it. And I just thought I would show it. Uh, and so if you're interested in that, you can go over to Locals and sign up and watch that video. I'll leave a link down in the comments section to Locals. Um, so I know we talk about this from off, off and on. And I know that some people probably have grown tired of it. Uh, I know, and to a certain extent, I have too. And what I'm speaking of is what's going on in Eastern Europe between Russia, Ukraine, NATO, all of that kind of stuff. And I know also, from time to time, things happen. Myself or others will get on and say, ah, things are escalating. And, and they're, we're not wrong. They are escalating. It just hasn't quite escalated to the point of, I guess you could say, no return to where full-on World War III is happening, but it is getting closer. So, uh, in the last couple of weeks or so, there's been various comments from Europe. Um, Spanish Prime Minister or something like that, uh, Spanish media, uh, France's President Macron, and a few others have stated that NATO troops are soon to be in Ukraine or on their way to Ukraine or already in Ukraine, that kind of stuff. Uh, Russia, Vladimir Putin has made it very clear that if that happens, that that's World War III and that they will respond accordingly. Uh, and so that's been kind of the buzz over the last two or three weeks now. Well, it's, it is kind of changing. Uh, there, there's, there's rumors now this is just rumors, and so we know that the rumors sometimes aren't true. But there are rumors that the French Foreign Legion is either A, currently in Ukraine, B, on their way by receiving orders, or C, uh, very soon to be on their way, within the next few weeks into Ukraine. And I know a lot of you are saying, oh, that's, that's the French Foreign Legion. The French Foreign Legion is under the direction and control of the French military. And even though they are comprised of foreign people that have joined, it is part of the French military. And so it's most likely if that happens, well, Russia could look at it as NATO fighting with Ukraine. Um, a, a British minister, a defense, former defense minister, has stated that uh, it's very likely that United Kingdom troops could end up in Ukraine soon. Um, th that's, that's kind of different. That's, that's an escalation. It looks like things are moving along there. Uh, Russia has been getting hit quite a bit here lately. 
uh, with drones and missile strikes and they're 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 striking back also um, oh what's his name from down there in South Carolina Lindsey Graham uh, took a trip to uh, took a trip to Ukraine and he was saying that Ukraine ought to do full mobilization, that everyone that is capable of fighting needs to get in on the fight. Uh, the United States military, uh, the Defense Department, said in a press conference that, that they will absolutely not allow Ukraine to fail, that we 100% as a government support Ukraine to the end, and even in the press conference alluded to the fact that what is happening right now is similar, the same, whatever, to the precursor to World War II. Kind of alluding to that this is starting to work out the same way as World War II, so meaning that World War III is just around the corner. Uh, so, so that's happening. There, there's always something going on with because it's an act of war, right? I mean, there's always something going on. But it does appear that things are once again escalating. Uh, now that Vladimir Putin has been re-elected, it seemed to kind of kick things off. Um, he in Saudi Arabia, uh, the, the, the king there, has stated that they are working to even further solidify their relationship. BRICS has been talking very openly in the last week or so about um, their type of currency that they're working on and they're going to take down the U.S. dollar and that they're going to have a, a, um, a, a currency transfer system that's going to be outside of the G7 and U.S. dollar system. Uh, China has uh, just in the last few days made a statement that if Russia was invaded or attacked uh, by NATO or you know something like that 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 uh, China would come to Russia's aid and defend them uh, so so that's the kind of stuff that's been going on and and then of course Putin has made some statements recently on how um, Russia's ready for nuclear war and that they will absolutely use one to defend themselves if they felt that they were had some kind of existential threat that they were that they were basically painted into the corner that Russia would in fact use a nuclear weapon now i guess the question is 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 this that close to world war 3 or are we just seeing this stuff as a bigger and bigger distraction? That, none of us know. But I, I will tell you this. It does look like, on the surface, that things are heating up. There's little things. Um, the British Navy, I, I can't remember all the details, but there's a sub and a, and a ship has, has gotten itself ready. They've, they've you know, it's, it's some new naval, not new, but old naval ships that they've refurbished. Uh, the French military uh, is talking about sending stuff over to, um, to, to Ukraine to fight Russia. There's a lot of talk. There's a lot of talk in Europe right now more openly. I mean, the talk has been there since the beginning, but it's been kind of alluded to. It's been, you know, possible maybe some point in the distant future that NATO troops could be involved in this. But now the talk is very out in the open. Like it's going to happen tomorrow. Almost like some of these European countries are conditioning their people for the possibility of NATO troops, which means World War III, but their own troops, part of NATO, into Ukraine. Uh, Germany's been doing the same thing. Poland's been doing the same thing. So we're, we're watching several European countries kind of line up and talk very openly about how uh, there's a strong possibility. And I, Now, you know, this, this came out about three or so weeks ago, and, and immediately NATO's like, oh, no, no, they started backtracking. Oh, no, 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 no. We have no immediate, uh, you know, plans to send any troops to Ukraine. And then all of a sudden now, it's, it's like they forgot that they said that. And these individual countries are saying, yeah, it's, it's very possible. Yes, we should do it. Yeah, it's, 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 we're, it's around the corner. It, and, and maybe it's just words to try to threaten Russia, to try to scare Putin, I, make him flinch. I don't know. Or maybe it's that they're trying to condition their people that they might be fighting in Ukraine soon. When that happens, we're going to be involved too. I mean, we're, we're the big bulk of the fighting force and the money and the equipment and everything of NATO. And so 
even if it's not the United States right away, if it's just some French troops in there and things start popping off and go full scale, we're going to be involved very quickly. Uh, we're building the largest military base in Europe uh, over in Poland. Um, the Russia said, I think it was even Putin that said, uh, that that the if French troops or any type of French troops that are that are in Ukraine that they would make a, a prime target, meaning that they're not going to say, well, these are just advisors. We, we'll we'll not try to specifically attack them. We'll we'll try to avoid taking out you know these advisors that NATO have said. No, they said that they're a target and they're going to take them out. Um, a lot of talk back and forth. And I think it, it should just remind us that we are still most definitely in the arena, in the ballpark, in, in the zip code, whatever, of World War III, just because of what's going on in Eastern Europe. And we're not even talking about Taiwan. Uh, the stuff going on, st stuff's still happening in Taiwan. It's very likely that what's going on in Haiti right now is part of that that um, Haiti was one of the few countries that recognized Taiwan as a sovereign nation. There's only a handful. And China has been doing its best to build relationships with them or to take those countries out. And Haiti's one of them. Uh, the stuff that they're doing down in, in Latin America, South America, of building relationships with the, because most of the countries that recognize Taiwan are in or south of the United States border. And so it's very possible that that's why we're seeing this. And, and then they're, they're talking now, now the number is up to potentially a million, potentially a million evacuees, refugees, escapees, whatever, from Haiti could come into the United States. All of this, they're all pieces of, to the same puzzle, folks. None of the, this isn't, these aren't separate puzzles, separate things that are happening just coincidentally at the same time. This is all part of the same picture, okay? Whether it's Russia, Ukraine, China, Taiwan, Haiti, the southern border, uh, the economy, the U.S. dollar, gold, Bitcoin, uh, transgender silliness, all of that kind of stuff. It's all part of the same picture. Stuff that's going on in the Israel, Middle East, Gaza, the red heifers, all that kind of stuff. It's all part of the same picture. Just different pieces to it. Even though they don't look related sometimes. Trust me, it's all part of the same. And when we start to see more and more of these things happening, think of it, as we're continuing with the analogy of a puzzle and a picture and the pieces, it's just one more piece put into place. So that means that we're getting closer and closer until the whole picture is viewable. And I think when that day happens, that's, that's the big, the big D-Day, the big day of destruction, whatever it is, whether it's World War III, you know, whatever, whatever happens once the full picture is in view. And we're starting to see more and more of that. We have a good idea of what that full picture is, but we don't know the full picture yet. We're starting to see that. What that translates to you and I, because you and I can't change these things, right? We, we can't really alter these, the, these things that you could, some of you might say, well, I'm just sitting here, loud, you know, I can't control it. It's just happening around me. Well, we can't control it, but we control what goes on in our own lives. And so as we see these, this picture come into view a little bit more each day, what that is, it should be a trigger of motivation for you to get a little bit more prepared, a lot more prepared. We see the stuff happening. Does it mean that real World War III is going to happen? Does it mean that nuclear war is going to happen? Does it mean that the grid's going to go down? That the, the eclipse is going to be the thing? Or an earthquake? Or I, I mean, there's so many things. I think a lot of it is hype. A lot of it is fear-mongering. A lot of it is to keep us in a state of fear and panic. But there's most definitely real things happening. And with each thing that happens, it should motivate us even more to get ready. I know you've already been doing it, but you got to push yourself even more. Because here's the thing: I know how I, I mean, I know I may not know how you think. I know how I think, for the most part. But I know how people are, and no matter how well prepared you are right now, if you and I would have a private conversation, and, and you were open and honest, and you're like, "Oh yeah, we're we're really prepared. I've been doing this for years. We got our own piece of property. We're off the grid. We're almost there. We got all this stuff. We got all these plans." And then something, the, the, the thing happens. Whatever the thing is, it happens. 
weeks later you're going to be sitting back regretting not doing that one thing or this thing or not getting that prepared or I should have had that stocked up it's just how we are and so the point is is to continue to motivate you push you to do more push you to stock up more push you to acquire more training more skills to get in a better place uh, of, of living uh, to, to build relationships with more people to get, to get closer and closer with the Father in heaven keep reading that Bible more and more spend more time on your knees in prayer spend more time bonding with your family because I'm telling you when this all falls apart when things start really really getting crazy it's going to be a stressor for your family. Your family may fall apart. You don't want that to happen. Certainly you don't want that to happen. So, so strengthen your family, your relationship with your spouse and your children. It's all going to be put to the test. It, collapses in history always do that. Okay? They're not necessarily the kind of thing that pulls people together. You're under so much stress and, and turmoil and, and you're so much, you see so much going on. It, it, it pulls people apart if they're not close together. So work on those. You still have some time. How much time? God only knows. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. He, he's the only one that knows. And we just should take every moment that we have, as much as we have. I'm not saying it's your only thing you should do. Yes, you enjoy life, all that kind of stuff. But we take all the moments that we can and we put it towards our readiness and building the family together, strengthening our relationships with our family and others around us and getting ourselves more prepared. Because when it all comes falling apart, that's the only thing that you're going to have to fall back on is, is your family, your community, your relationship with the father and, and the preps and the skills that you've developed. That, that's, that's it. That's really it. So you make sure that those things are as solid as you can. Because everything else, it's all unraveling pretty quickly. We need to be getting our houses in order and preparing ourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.